This video will demonstrate how to make an object hollow inside and thickness on the outside, which is useful if you plan on pouring fluid into a container in a simulation or 3D printed out. The project file is reused from a previous video where I demonstrated how to build the bottle geometry using a procedural modeling workflow. Links in the description below. So if you're interested in uh, beginner concepts to procedural modeling, please check out that video. My bottle is sealed here so i want to make it hollow so i can later on if i wanted decided to do a water simulation i can pour water into it into this glass bottle or anything like that i want to make it more complete i want to give it like a hollow shape so i'm going to take this bottle and make it smaller i'm just going to make it smaller like this and see what happens and I'm going to take the original size of this bottle. So let's template it. So we've made it wee smaller. Let's do the boolean. So what the boolean will do, it will subtract. What we can do is take this original size of this bottle. And I'm going to subtract this smaller size of this bottle. And I will get the difference. So the difference, that shape right there. And thus it should hold hollow make it a hollow shape so let's put it here make it subtract a minus b and i end up with a hole in the bottom and the top is sealed which is not what i want now how did that happen when i scaled the transformation here now, the pivot point is based on the origin right there. There's the pivot point right there. So that wasn't really, it wasn't scaling the way I was thinking of. I only want to scale on the X and uh, Z direction. I want the Y to remain, to remain as it is. Because if you look closely here, this neck part is not lined up with the top. So you ever have a bottle in your hand? the bottle is um, long here and this part should like this uh, it doesn't hollow out like that so I only want so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this X parameter right click copy this parameter come over here and paste relative references so I um, this is now copying this so whatever I put here will be there. Now I'm going to change this back to 1. This way I can scale it only in one uh, on one plane. Let's see what it looks like now. So it's a little better. And we have that nice uh, neck lined up with the outside as well. So it's a little better now. But there's still a hole in the bottom. What I'm going to do is select this and I'm going to select the face on the bottom. So I'm going to go group, create. Put the render flag here. Uncheck this. And I do want a primitive. And I want a primitive with normal facing down. So negative 1 on the y-axis. 0 for this. Spread angle, 0. Because I want it directly, exactly facing down. No other uh, primitives do I want. I only want the one on the bottom. So that will select this guy. And this is the only primitive. This is the only face in this whole geometry that is facing downwards. Exactly down. All the other ones are facing in all sorts of directions. The one on the bottom is the only one facing down. So I'm going to name this bottom face and I'm going to move that bottom face only the bottom face and I'm going to move it up so I'm going to move it up so this is sort of like the bottom thickness because how much I move this up will, de uh, will define how thick it is on the bottom that's way too thick, so I'm going to go 0 0.05. And this, scaling 
this number here will define the thickness of the edges. So I'm going to call this bottle thickness. So now I'm going to connect this over here instead. So I have a better hollowing model over here. So this one makes a better geometry to haul out using the boolean to subtract from this from the original shape here. So this shape now makes a nicer uh, geometry to subtract from. Now it kind of looks more like an urn. <laughs> but I don't want to make this bottle too um, I don't want to make this bottle too complex. Let's make a cork for our bottle. Now the cork will be at the top for sure. So we can actually reuse this piece of geometry. I want the top piece because that will be the size of the cork. So I can use the same trick I did before with the bottom face but facing upwards instead. So I'm going to call this up face. And instead of negative one, I'm going to have positive one. Render flag. So now oh, I had this, this primitive, this face selecting upwards and not the bottom. So this trick works well with, with the up face as well. Now I'm going to do a poly extrude. Oh, actually, sorry. I'm going to do a blast because the cork uh, let's move this outside too because that's no longer part of this so I'm gonna delete everything else but that face but the up face I only want the up face so select delete non-selected so I only want the up face and I'm not gonna template that now I'm gonna poly extrude it So this is the cork height, how high the cork is. And let me template the bottle. So it's it's right at the tip of that. So I want it to be a little lower. Let's move the cork down a bit. Uh, halfway, let's say, let's make it more procedural. So this is the cork height. So let's take this distance, let's copy this parameter come back here how much do we want to move it I want to move it half the height so divide by two let me smooth this up okay so this is the cork height which is the parameter here from this one so that's what that is I take that and I divide it by two that's what this part it does and then I put a negative in front of it because we're going downwards. Enter. It's moved halfway down. So this is the original position of the cork, and this is moved down. Let's put oh, let's put a null first. I can now merge them both together. And here I have my procedural bottle. So let's go back up here and let's test this out by changing these parameters. See if we broke anything. Oh, so this can't be less than zero, which is fine. Now I might not always want a cork at the top, so I want to make that procedural as well. Sometimes I don't want a cork. I would just want the maybe I just want the bottle. So I'm gonna put a switch down. So I I'll either switch between this or maybe I just want the bottle so I'm this will have to crisscross so if I switch this number to one then I don't have a cork if I switch to zero that means so this is the zero I'm gonna put a null here so it's easier to distinguish this is the switch zero and this is switch one so this path is switch one and this one this merge has both the 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 bottle and the cork is switch zero because it goes from left to right so i'm gonna create a checkbox in order to hide the cork so let's go back up here right click parameters just gonna now i want to toggle for this so i'm gonna put it at the top i'm gonna call it 
go back in here and I'm going to put the switch here, link the switch. So click and drag this and drop it in here. Apply, accept, cork. There we go. So when we check, when the cork, when this toggle button is checked, it has a value of one, which is the value switch here. So that's the value of here, which is this. Uh, which is the path here that does not merge the cork over here. Therefore, it it's, it um, hides it. And when it's unchecked, it has a value of zero. So this is zero now, which is this path. So that's why I, I needed this on the left and this to the right. So the switch counts from left to right. I hope you enjoyed this video. I may do a follow up to this project and go a next step further into making a Python script to automatically create dozens of different bottles by randomizing the custom parameters that were made in this video. This would be handy if you needed a dozen or so items to populate a shelf in a game, a laboratory room, or even a messy student desk. And the fact that it's procedural will mean that it'll be one click of a button to generate, which is extremely convenient. Thanks for watching and sticking to the end.